Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to look at configuring intrusion prevention system through the iOS on a router. So here is the topology we'll be looking. We've got PCA, PCC, a syslog server and router one where we'll be doing the configuration. So first things first, let us have a look at our PCs and make sure they've got full connectivity. Packet Tracer has already set up all the routing and all the IP addresses. Just do a quick test to make sure that everything can ping everything else. Now the first ping usually fails due to the ARP process, but then the remaining pings should be successful. And there we go. We're pinging in both directions because that's what we'll be testing in a minute. So now we ping from PCC to PCA and that's successful as well. Part of the first thing we have to look at is we have to make sure that the security package is enabled. By default, it isn't on Packet Tracer and maybe in the real world as well, depending on your license. So we go in and we configure the security package to be part of the licensing. Because we've changed the license, we must reboot. So we save the config and do a reload. All right, looks like the router successfully reloaded and the routing's come up. So let's log in and begin to configure our intrusion prevention system. The first step is to create a subdirectory where the IPS system lives. Now in the real world, we'd also use this same directory to copy the signature definition file across, but it's built into Packet Tracer, so we don't need to copy the file, but the process is still the same. So I've made the directory and now we're actually pointing it the IPS system at the directory we've just made. Now we need to go in and configure it with a name. So we'll use the name iOS IPS just as a placeholder name. You could name it anything if you wished. The second step is to go in and set up the signature categories. What we're going to do for this lab, because we only want to monitor one thing, we're going to go through all the categories and disable all of the IPS signatures because we don't want to overload all of this thing. So we go all the signatures and we say retire. So the way you disable signatures is you say that they're retired. We do it for all and for the IPS subcategories as well. Retire everything just for the sake of this lab because we only want to test one thing. In the real world, though, you'll be a bit more choosy about which ones you want to leave active, which ones you want to retire. Now let's create a rule and apply it to an interface. So we go to interface gigabit one, we set up the IPS rule, same name as we set before, and we say direction out. We should always try and send our alerts and our notifications to somewhere that makes sense. We've been using Splunk a lot. So today we're just going to send it to a simple syslog server. So we enable logging, point it at the IP address, and we make sure the logs include the time date stamp right down to the millisecond. Previously, we went and disabled all of the signatures but we want to just enable just the one for the purpose of this lab. The one signature we want to enable is 2004. This is the signature that represents ICMP echo request. And that's what we'll be using to test it. We go into the status of the signatures and we unretire, so we enable the signatures for this instance. Then we need to go in, still inside 2004, we need to give it an action. So we've got two choices, and we want to enable them both. So we want to generate the alerts to send off to our syslog, 
And we want to actually deny the traffic that's detected by this signature pattern, which will be an echo. Now we need to verify that we've got all the settings set up. So we type in the command show IP IPS all, and we get all the configurations for IPS. We have the subdirectory where everything lives. We have the fact that syslog is enabled and turned on. We have currently only got one signature enabled because we retired everything and enabled that one 2004 signature. And we have it applied to interface gigabit one in the outbound direction. So traffic that leaves that, if it's an echo, it'll be triggered against this signature. Everything seems to be set up now. So let's verify that it's working the way it's meant to. So everything was pinging before. So if we ping from PC A to PC B, that should work. Never mind the first ARP request because that always times out. And as you can see, the, we still have a successful ping from PC A towards PC C. So let's see what happens when we ping from PC C towards PC A. Oh dear, the pings used to work and now they don't. This is because we have blocked ICMP going from PCC towards PCA. So let's check the logs. On the syslog server, we have syslog enabled and look, we have the three entries. So the first one probably went away because of the ARP, but we got three clear entries where those pings were actively blocked by the intrusion prevention and the logging was successfully sent towards the syslog server. So let us verify how we've gone in the packet tracer exercise. We check our results and we've got 11 out of 11. Everything's got a nice green tick and everything looks good. So well done. Thanks very much for watching. Please remember to subscribe, tick the notification bell for new messages. Give me a like if you'll enjoy this video and leave any comments of what you'd like me to see do in my next video. Thanks very much and I'll see you in the next one.